Video games, everybody loves them, and we bet if they existed in their worlds, even Disney villains would play them. But the question is, if Disney's bad guys were gamers, what games would they play? What titles would they be interested in and why? That's what we're gonna figure out today, baby. Hey guys, I'm Brad with Wicked Binge, and this is What Video Games Would Disney Villains Play? And real quick before we begin, remember if you love our usual binge formats and video games, make sure to subscribe to our gaming channel, 1UP Binge. All right, let's get started. First on the list is the first ever Disney villain, the evil queen from Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs. Now, a big thing for the queen's character within the context of the film is that she is completely and utterly obsessed with beauty. It is the reason she tries to dispatch Snow, after all. As a result, we can't help but think she'd be a fan of the Sims franchise. Her world might be a different story, but in a game like this, she can genuinely make herself the fairest of them all. Being a queen also makes her controlling, an aspect of her character that we also believe would make this game more attracting to her. Another aspect of her character that intrigues us is that she can create potions and spells with ease, which makes us think she'd be a big fan of the Cooking Mama games. Yeah, cooking food is a lot different than creating deadly spells, but if you can do that, you can cook some food. The evil queen might be, well, an evil queen, but even the evilest of monarchs can find the time to relax and play some video games. Next is Scar from The Lion King. There's one thing that Scar craves, power. Because of this, we think Scar would feel most comfortable playing real-time strategy games. I wouldn't dream of challenging you. The Civilization and Command and Conquer games in particular stand out to us as being his potential favorites. Scar wants to rule over everyone and everything, and video games of this genre would be able to let him live out his fantasy. He could even possibly gather ideas from these games for how to be a better strategist. Another element of Scar's character that would make these games alluring to him is his rather silent demeanor. Scar is very soft-spoken and not prone to the loud or angry outbursts that a lot of Disney villains are. Strategy games very much fit the calm yet cunning aspect of Scar's personality. They aren't as loud as a lot of video games and they require a lot of patience and persistence, something Scar would also excel at. Don't forget how long he waited to finally take over the Pride Lands. While they might not be the most popular genre of video games, in the Animal Kingdom, the real-time strategy game is king. Rolling back the clock, we're gonna talk about Cruella de Vil from 101 Dalmatians. In the eyes of Cruella, fashion and beauty are what matter above everything else. Almost everything this vile villain does is in the name of looking beautiful. When we remember that aspect of her character, we can't help but think she'd love the Animal Crossing series. Think about it for a moment. In the Animal Crossing games, a big feature is the ability to design your character however you like. From their appearance to their clothing, customization is a big deal, and it's that feature that we think would inspire Cruella to get into the game. Another aspect of Cruella's character, albeit an obscure one, is that she's a reckless driver. She drives like a maniac and doesn't seem to particularly care about it. Going off her driving in the 101 Dalmatians movie, we can't help but think she'd love Mario Kart. Her driving style may not be adequate on the road, but in Bowser's Castle or Rainbow Road, she might have what it takes to earn first place. And even if she isn't the best at the game itself, at least she wouldn't have to worry about getting a speeding ticket. Cruella might be an angry and cruel villain, but in the world of video games, she can truly become a queen of fashion. Now we head to the underworld for Hades. Right off the bat, we think Hades would really enjoy the dungeon crawler action game, Hades. On one hand, Hades is so vain he'd obviously enjoy a video game named after him, but we also think he'd appreciate the game's focus on Olympus and the various Greek gods. Speaking of games that are about the gods, we also think this connection would make Hades a fan of the God of War series. Hades might have failed to defeat Hercules in the film, but with this series, he can finally make that dream come true. Speaking of Ol' Herc, one interesting thing we can decipher from Hades' character is that he clearly loves a challenge. He spends years trying to take out the son of Zeus. Because of this, we think Hades would be a big fan of Cuphead and other various video games known for their difficulty. Admittedly, Hades might be the kind of guy to rage at these kind of games and break his controller, but we also think that fits his character, wouldn't you agree? Overall, video games are well known for letting us live out our fantasies, and appears that it's true even for the god of the underworld. Next is Ursula from The Little Mermaid. Ursula might be evil, but she does have one seemingly soft spot, for Flotsam and Jetsam. 
She cares about some creatures, so this connection makes us think she'd be a genuine fan of the Pokemon franchise. She would like all the creatures, and with how much she loves to acquire more power, she'd also be fascinated by how the Pokemon can grow stronger and evolve into different forms. And for the record, Ursula would definitely gravitate to the water and dark type Pokemon. Ursula is also a sea creature, so she'd naturally want a game that lets you explore the ocean. We think the Echo the Dolphin games would suit best. While Ursula might not be a dolphin, she would feel right at home with its style of gameplay nonetheless. Ursula might not look like the kind of person to be in the video games, which is something that can truthfully be said about most Disney villains, but the titles we've chosen for her prove that video games really can be for anyone. And yes, that includes a Sakelia. We're gonna stay on the ocean for Peter Pan's Captain Hook. When it comes to video games, Hook is at a disadvantage compared to others. One of his hands is gone, replaced with his iconic Hook. But that's not his only problem. He's prone to frequent outbursts and tantrums, which also means any video game of a harder difficulty is likely off the table. Captain Hook would find solace in easy, calming titles. One of those titles is the mega-hit Minecraft. The game's methodical pace is a perfect fit for Hook, and is very welcoming for players who like their gaming experience to be a little easier. We also believe Captain Hook would enjoy a game of Tetris. A game like this would really get his brain going, and is an optional game for somebody who can only use one of their hands. Our last pick is something of an obvious one, but we think it needs mentioning nonetheless. Sea of Thieves feels like a game that the captain could really sink his hook into. He'd feel at home as a pirate, and who knows? Maybe the game could mold him into a better captain. At the very least, he'd enjoy the experience of traversing the seven seas without the fear of Peter Pan making a mockery out of him. Now we have Aladdin's Jafar. When discussing Aladdin's nemesis, one of the character traits that we most notably associate with him is his deceitfulness. In the Aladdin movie, Jafar is focused on becoming the Sultan and uses his scepter to influence the minds of others to get what he wants. As it is a major part of his character, we think the game Among Us would be one of his favorites. In Among Us, the main goal is for the players to find an imposter who's sabotaging their efforts. Jafar would excel at being the imposter, dispatching various players while appearing to be nothing more than a fellow teammate. While deceit is a big part of Jafar's character, another element that makes him the character we know is his lust for power. Jafar was obsessed with becoming Sultan, and when he got the lamp, he was quick to take full advantage. I just keep us As such, we think he'd also be into real-time strategy games. Not unlike Scar, we think he'd gravitate towards the Total War series. He loves to feel powerful and the idea of ruling over others, so these games would fit him like a glove as they're more focused on battles than just simplistic strategy. Agrabah might not have been Jafar's to rule, but in the world of video games, anything is on the table. Next is Dr. Facilier. There are a lot of traits that make this witch doctor who he is. His shadow powers, use of voodoo, and deceitful demeanor are just a few. However, one thing that truly differentiates him from the other Disney villains is how flexible he is. Dr. Facilier is a truly animated villain. His movements and overall character are noticeably more alive than most Disney villains, which makes him a treat to watch. In terms of video games, we think Facilier would be mostly captivated by motion control games. Two stand out to us. Those games are Dance Dance Revolution and Just Dance. Dr. Facilier is great at dancing and putting on a good show, so these games would be a great fit for him. Not only do they make sense on account of his lively character animation, but they also keep him active and healthy. If those elements are important for any of us, then you know a voodoo witch doctor after your soul needs it too. No one fights like Gaston, no one hunts like Gaston, and no one plays games like Gaston. The antagonist of Beauty and the Beast is next. Gaston is a vain character who's only interested in being the best at everything. With that element of his character in mind, we think that Gaston would mostly be interested in competitive games. He would love first-person shooters and fighting games, like a good match of Call of Duty, and you know for certain that he'd be interested in participating in an Overwatch tournament. When it comes to fighting games, Gaston would be in the Super Smash Bros. scene. He'd go to tournaments, compete for prizes, anything that he can do to prove he is the best player. If he isn't performing well, he would drop that game and move towards another competitive title to try and master. Gaston looks at most of life as a competition of sorts, and for better or for worse, this same mentality would be held towards any and all video games. Now, would Gaston actually be a good Smash Brothers player? That's a question for another day. Last, but certainly not least, is Maleficent. 
Maleficent is one of the most powerful Disney villains to date, and as such, we did run into some difficulty finding games that would interest her. Maleficent doesn't need to resort to games to live out her fantasies, as her powers would almost certainly take care of any desire she possesses. However, there are a few titles that come to mind. The Witcher 3 is one of those titles. We think the game's setting, which is similar to Sleeping Beauty, would resonate with Maleficent. If nothing else, it would give her the chance to see what being a knight in shining armor is all about. Maybe Prince Philip had it harder than she thought. More than anything else, however, we believe Maleficent would be intrigued by the Souls games, like Dark Souls and Elden Ring. Not only do they fit into similar fantasy aesthetics as Maleficent does, but they are also a challenge. Maleficent, with all her powers and strength, seems like the type of villain who would be welcoming of a game that's more difficult than easy. So while she might not have the most obvious picks for games to enjoy, even someone as evil as Maleficent can find enjoyment in a video game. Alright guys, that's it. Let us know in the comment section if you agree with our choices, and tell us what we should cover next. Remember to hit that notification bell and binge more of our videos, but most importantly, stay wicked.